1934 Mark Polsky was a happy man. He had his favorite occupation, he played chess professionally, had a large family, a beloved wife and children. But it all soon disappeared in the flames of World War II. Nearly 30 years later, Mark has become a sullen old man living away from the big cities in South America. His house is cluttered, his yard is shabby, and his trips to the bathroom are more like torture. His entire family died during the war, and he was a concentration camp prisoner but survived. As a reminder of those times, all that remained on his arm was a number. But the wound in his soul was much more visible. The only consolation in his hopeless life were the black roses his wife loved so much. He tended them carefully every day. Polsky was unsociable. Even the postman who brought newspapers saw him only through a crack in the gate. So when Frau Kaltenbrunner came to see him, he wanted to get rid of her as soon as possible. The plot next door was empty, and Kaltenbrunner wanted to purchase it for a certain citizen. She asked Polsky for the phone number of the landowners. However, he said he didn't know anything. Frau Kaltenbrunner was persistent, and she got the number she wanted. She bought the land and the house, and a short time later the new owner, Mr. Herzog, stopped by. He always wore dark glasses, and young Germans helped him with the move. Mark was triggered by their speech, but he had to put up with it. For the second time in his life, the Germans came to his house and began to establish their order. Shortly after moving in, Mr. Herzog's dog, Wolfie, climbed through a hole in the fence, piled on and damaged Polsky's black roses. He wrapped the evidence of the crime in newspaper and brought it to a neighbor. But Herzog denied everything. Then Mark threw the evidence gathered on the lawn through a gap in the wicket and went home satisfied. The next day, Frau Kaltenbrunner came to him with the site plan. Polsky demanded that Herzog repair the fence, then his dog would not be able to climb it. And Herzog agreed, but it turned out that the fence was not standing properly. Part of the property, along with the rosebush, belongs to a neighbor. So Kaltenbrunner suggests that the roses be moved elsewhere, but Polsky is sure that it will kill them. Still unable to find a solution, Kaltenbrunner wrote an application to the court. The judge offered to divide the bush among the neighbors, but Mark was against it. He was cornered, and to save the roses, he agreed to give up some of his land. When a new fence was put up, Polsky wrote instructions for Herzog to take proper care of the bush. He had guests at this point, and Polsky decided to tag their car for revenge, but he couldn't squeeze a drop out of himself. When he returned home, he saw a neighbor throwing away his scribble and headed for him. He and Herzog had quarreled and Herzog's glasses fell off. At that moment Polsky recognized the man. Mr. Herzog was actually Adolf Hitler. Mark had once seen him in person, and he could not forget those cold, angry eyes. The next day, Polsky went to the Israeli embassy to report his neighbor the Führer. The intelligence officer with whom he spoke was skeptical of Mark's version, for officially the Führer was already dead. And until Polsky had proof, she won't help him. Mark goes to the store and buys a bunch of books about Hitler. He finds in them a detailed description of the Führer's appearance and hobbies, information about his habits. Polsky begins to try this information on his neighbor and realizes that Hitler really does live behind his fence. He needs to get an image of his neighbor, so Polsky buys a camera and sets it up by the bedroom window. He takes pictures of the Führer, taking pictures of his surroundings and what he is doing. From time to time Frau Kaltenbrunner brings some people to him. They are blindfolded and only take the blindfold off in front of Mr. Herzog's house. She says that these visits are necessary so that Herzog will have money. After printing pictures and gathering his findings on Herzog, Polsky goes to the Israeli embassy again and shows it to the intelligence officer. But even such irrefutable evidence, in Mark's opinion, does not convince her. She suggests he go to a support group that helps with mental trauma like his. After this conversation, Polsky sees Herzog playing chess with himself. At that moment a letter carrier comes to him and asks him to sign for a letter. This is when the old Jew gets an idea how to get proof. In one of the books there is a photo of Hitler's letter, and if he gets a sample of Herzog's handwriting, they can be compared. Polsky asks to write him to confirm that Herzog has taken some of his land from him, but he wants to consult with Kaltenbrunner first. Upset that his scheme has failed, Mark says the outcome of the chess game Herzog is playing to spite him. Shortly thereafter, a neighbor comes to him to ask for coffee. Polsky invites him into the house, and as they walk through the yard, he recalls a time when he was in a concentration camp. There too were Nazis with sheepdogs. In fact, Herzog came to check out his neighbor's version of that chess game. They finished it and Polsky was right. Herzog promised to write a letter of confirmation for him if they played, but despite losing, he did not write anything. 
He offered Polsky one more game, after which he would definitely write a letter. He agreed, and during the game he supposedly went to the bathroom. In fact, he had gone into Herzog's bedroom and found in his closet a locked metal box with Nazi symbols on it. However, it was not possible to see what was inside. Polsky gave in and leaked the batch, which Herzog guessed. In spite of this, he wrote the letter, though not by hand, but on a typewriter. During the night, Polsky sneaks into Herzog's house to steal a painting painted by a neighbor. He wants to carry out an expertise and prove that the painting was made by the hand of the Fuhrer. However, Polsky is prevented from committing the theft by Wolfie. The dog chases him to Mark's place, where Mark, in self-defense, beats the doggy with a shovel. He then drags him out onto the road to make it look like an accident. When Herzog finds Wolfie, he asks for help with the funeral. Together with Polsky, they bury the doggy in the woods. Herzog was grieving for his pet and showed up at a neighbor's house to play chess, talk about Wolfie, and have a drink. Polsky asked him leading questions to hear in direct confirmation that Hitler himself was in front of him. Herzog offered to paint a portrait of Mark, and he agreed. When he received the finished work, his opinion of Herzog began to change. Now, he liked his neighbor, and he no longer wanted to rat him out to Israeli intelligence. Herzog reciprocated, he even allowed him to water the rosebush at any time. The next day Herzog came to him for a hot drink. He got drunk and was about to tell his new friend some secret, but then Kaltenbrunner appeared. As the Frau took him home, Polsky saw some suspicious people visiting his neighbor again. As they left, they saluted him as if he were the Fuhrer. At this point, Mark came to his senses, cut out the portrait and went with it to the Israeli embassy. However, instead of an art expert, the intelligence officer invited a psychotherapist. Upon learning of this, Polsky became angry and was kicked out of the embassy. He left the painting on the desk. While he wasn't home, Herzog reached for his dog on a neighbor's property and saw a camera in the window. He guessed that Polsky was watching him. In the evening, he forced the neighbor to admit it, and they began to fight. Polsky blamed Herzog for the death of his family, and he said he was a very bad man, but he was not the Fuhrer. He showed his neighbor the contents of a metal box. In it were pictures of Hitler's doppelgangers. Herzog was one of them. All of them were killed, but he managed to escape. Now, he goes into hiding and earns money from Nazi fanatics who buy his pictures and come to see him. Finally convinced that he was not Hitler in front of him, Polsky cried. He finally accepted his past and stopped being afraid of it. A change occurred in his soul, thanks to which he forgave those who had done him so much harm. But that change did not save Herzog. An intelligence officer did examine his painting and realized that the man was somehow connected with Nazi war criminals. She came to Polsky's house to set up surveillance on his neighbor. No matter how he talked her out of it, she wouldn't listen. Then he came to Herzog and told him how he and his family had been hiding in the basement and the neighbor they trusted had turned them in. Polsky doesn't want to do the same thing as that neighbor. He advises Herzog to run away, and he follows his advice. Kaltenbrunner helps him move out. Herzog leaves his new dog to Mark Polsky. He also gives him his plot of land along with a rose bush. In return, Polsky cuts down roses and gives them to Herzog. He has a soft spot for Frau Kaltenbrunner and is able to win her favor with flowers. When they leave, Polsky is at peace, because the pain that has haunted him all his life vanishes with them. And that's where the movie ends. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to watch more movie recap videos like this.